Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on finding the last populated row or column with the user-defined function in Microsoft Excel. User-defined functions are functions that we create using VBA, and they work in a similar manner to the functions that are built into Excel by default. I'm going to show you how to build two user-defined functions one to find the last populated row, and one to find the last populated column. So in this Excel worksheet, I have fictitious data. And you can see by the size of this table, it's easy to determine that the last populated row is 21, and the last populated column is 5, or column E. However, in larger data sets, it would be more convenient to have a function that returns the address or the number of the row or the address or the number of the column. So we will get started with building the user-defined functions by pressing Alt F11, which opens the VBA editor, and we're going to want to insert a module when creating a user-defined function. So let's start with the first function, which would be the one that will find the last row. So it'll be function last row. And the arguments will be a cell, the cell as range. And I'm going to have an optional x as boolean. And then the function will be a string, so it'll be as string. So you see once you complete the first line, the end function comes up automatically and you can put the code in between. So first we're going to declare a variable for the value of the row. So it would be dim r as long. And then we're going to set a value for r. So r is going to equal cells row rows dot count and then cell column dot end excel up dot row. So this will give us the last row that's used in the data set. Now I have this optional argument, x is boolean. And what this does is it allows the user to select whether they want the address returned or simply the value of r, which would be the number of rows that are populated. So we'll need to use an if then else statement for this. So the if x equals, and you can see it comes up, you have a choice of true or false. That's because it's already declared as boolean. So if x is true, then last row, now I want the address here, so it would be cells r, then the cell column, and then the address. So that's if the user enters true for that optional argument else last row will simply equal r. So the else last row equals r. And remember with an if then else statement we have to end it. So it would be end if. So let's take a look and see how this works on the worksheet. So it's a user defined function now so it's going to come up when I put equal sign and start typing, you can see it's last row. And remember, there's two arguments. So let's say that we want the last populated value for ID. So I'll select A1. And say I want the address, I'm going to type in true. So it gives me the address of the last populated row, which is A21. If we look down here, that in fact is correct. 
Now because this address is A21, we know that this is row 21. But I have built in a way to just have 21 returned, as I mentioned. So it be last row, A1, and either just by default, so just hit enter, and you get 21. Or you could enter in false, but there's no need to the way I have it designed. So it'd be A1, false returns the same value. So it's important to note here that the way I've designed these user defined functions they will not automatically update. So to kind of give you a comparison if I were to use the count function and just count the values in column A. So it has, there's 20 numbers in column A. If I wanted everything, it would be count A. So I'll use that. So you have 21, so it matches. So if I were to add a value, let's say we have the next participant comes in and that's 1021, you can see that the count A function updated, but the user defined function did not and either the one that returns the address, the one with the parameter true at the end, or the one that returns the actual row. If you want this to update, one of the ways is to press Control-Alt-F9. So it'll be Control-Alt-F9, and you can see the functions updated. Another aspect I want to show you regarding this function is that the way it handles missing values. So I've removed the additional ID number. So I'm going to hit Control Alt F9 and I'll return this back to count A. So we can see it all matches again and we have 21 values in column A. If I were to delete, say, 1010, just delete that. You can see this will update. Now, when I hit Control Alt F9, this is updated too, but no change occurred in the result because it's still going to give us the last populated value in column A. So I'm going to return this ID and delete this. And now let's build the find the last column subroutine. We'll move back over to the VBA editor. And I'm going to use this function. And I'm going to copy and paste it. But there are a lot of changes I'm going to need to make to make this work for column. So first, instead of last row, I'm going to name this one last column, C-O-L. The rest of this line can stay the same. Instead of R, I'm going to make it C for column. I'm going to change that C here as well. And I'm going to need to rewrite this line of code here. So instead of rows.count, comma, cell.column, I'm going to want cell.row and columns plural dot count and then instead of excel up it's going to be excel to left and then it's, of course instead of row it's going to be column it's singular the if then else statement the structure of it remain the same. So it'd be if x equals true, then else and end if that'll stay the same. Instead of again last row, it'll be last column equals c. So I'll make that change down here. I'll change this to last column up here. But this the rest of this code is going to need to change. Instead of r comma cell dot column, it's going to be cell dot row comma C. 
So there's quite a few changes when copying this function and converting it over into the last column function. So let's take a look at how this works on the worksheet. So we're going to be looking at the columns now. And let's start last column. And we'll still select, uh, in this case, A1. And we'll look for the address. So I'll put true. And it returns E1. And that's accurate. That is the last populated column. And again, if we wanted to use this for just the number, we know it's 5. We know that the last column number is 5. But just to demonstrate it, you could leave it like this or with false. It's the same result. As I mentioned before, to update a function like this, so say I add another variable, another value into this column, the Control Alt F9, you see it adjusts. Again, if I delete that extra variable, I want to hit Control Alt F9 again to update it. I hope you found this video in creating a user defined function to find the last populated row or column to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.